Hello everyone, Craig Chamberlain here with CraigTheTechTeacher.com and we're talking about Windows 8.1 again today. And this is a series of videos where I walk you guys through with this wonderful book, Windows 8.1, The Missing Manual. This is of course by O'Reilly and I strongly recommend you guys pick this book up. You can find a link to it in the video description. And this book is our guiding light through in our journey through Windows 8. Yes, I read books. Books are very important to learning. And I'm going to do my best to walk you guys through everything you need to know about Windows 8 in this series. But remember, this entire video series and everything else that I do is powered by patrons. If you're not yet a patron, make sure you consider becoming one in the link below. Because as you know, working for Google AdSense or the advertising model is like working for a ghost. I'd much rather work for a community of people who are really finding value in what it is that I do. And that's why the patron program is there. So check it out and read more about it. Speaking of which, our top patrons for this week are, for this month, are Jacob Williams with WildAcademy.com and Ashley, wow, I did it again, Brooke Chamberlain with Ashley Beige Photography at AshleyBeigePhotography.com. Check them out in the links below. Let's get started. Windows 8.1, as you guys know, we're actually going to get into Windows this time today. What is Windows is the big question. That's the one we're going to answer today. Basically, Windows is a file cabinet, okay? It's essentially a way, it's a graphical user interface that allows you to use software, allows you to use the, har the software and hardware of the computer in a way that makes you productive. Uh, historically, computers, when they were created, they were very, very complex, and it was very difficult to get input and output from a computer device, required a, a lot of effort, um, but an operating system was a layer that was placed between the computer equipment and the user to make the experience much better. And in a nutshell, that's what Windows has been since the beginning, and that's what any time you use a device of any kind, that's what the operating system or the kernel is. It's a piece of software or a software layer that allows you to basically be productive with computer equipment. So in a nutshell, that's essentially what a computer is. And uh, that's also why we, we like operating systems, and that's also why we can get frustrated with them, like with the new user interface change, because we become less productive. When I said it's a filing cabinet, uh, it's also everything in your operating system is sort of similar to a file cabinet system in which you have a main file cabinet known as your C drive or your main system drive. Usually they say C colon slash. And inside of that filing cabinet, you have a whole bunch of folders. And in those folders, there might be other folders. And essentially, by using this file cabinet method, it's a way so for you to organize all of your files. And I'm going to show you guys a little bit of that here in a little bit, just kind of nutshelling it here before we get started. And another thing that an operating system really is, it really does well with, is it, it allows you to seamlessly use new hardware devices. Good operating systems, including Windows 8, including Windows 7, kind of Vista, definitely Windows XP, was very friendly when you plug something new into it. It'll go out, find out what it needs to find out about the hardware so that the software can work with the hardware. So if I plug in a camera, or I plug in a phone, if I plug in a microphone, if I plug in whatever else I might have, the computer can recognize it. That's the operating system's job. And Windows 8 and Windows 7 do a phenomenal job of this. Uh, it's probably one of their most powerful features in uh, the Mac operating system as well is that ability to plug in almost any piece of hardware and the operating system will do a very good job of uh, identifying that uh, software, that hardware, and installing it appropriately. Now let's take a look at our desktop here on Windows 8. You'll notice that right now my resolution is really low and resolution is, that's why you see a little box on a big screen. I want to talk about that a little later, but let's get into the filing cabinet I was discussing before. Uh, when you first boot up Windows 8 and log in, it's going to give you these tiles. Now, if you open up the File Explorer, this is going to show you what the filing cabinet looks like. On the top left-hand corner, they do a couple things for you. They, they do what the most commonly used files or folders on your computer are. This is your desktop, which also is this desktop. You see that? So when I click on this on desktop, it's going to bring up my basic desktop and it's going to show me all the icons that are on my desktop. Downloads is a common folder that's used. It stores all of your downloads when you download something off of the internet to your computer. 
and your recent places, of course, are the recent things you've used. As we discussed earlier, you also have a SkyDrive. It comes packaged with your Windows 8 operating system, and this is all stored on the cloud, or it's all backed up online, as well as you being able to use it offline, right here on your computer. Now, when I said things are organized like a filing cabinet, let me go back to the actual computer, so this PC, and this is the main system drive I was telling you about. This is the local C drive. If I open this up, you'll notice there's a whole bunch of folders inside of it, five to be exact, because I just installed this. Now, when you go to install software, typically it'll drop a folder inside of your folders, and essentially that's all this operating system is and what many of them are. It's an organizational technique. It's essentially a way of storing all of your files in an organized way so that you can access them. So if you kind of visualize that experience as you're kind of getting started with a Windows operating system, you can say, okay, well, how would I do this like in a filing cabinet? So then you can make a folder for like uh, for your your documents, but then you're like, okay, well, I would have a folder in my filing cabinet for financial documents, and I'd have a folder in my filing cabinet for letters that I've sent, and I'd have a folder for emails I want to archive, a folder for receipts, and you can kind of get in your head how you want to utilize the filing system of your actual operating system. And that's really why it's a, it's a very important thing to know uh, when it comes to using an operating system, that it's structured in that way, and it's also the best way to organize yourself. Now, before we get too deep into how it's organized and what it's doing, let's talk about some of the functionality of operating systems that you really should know about as you're getting into them. A lot of people aren't aware of this, but when you're on your desktop, like I am right now, if you right click, you get a whole slew of options. Now, this right click option is, is invaluable and many people do not even use it. A lot of times when you're on your screen, you can right click and you can go down and take a look at other options or other things you can do to that specific object you're right clicking on. Since I right clicked on my desktop, it's not really an object. All I can do is either personalize my desktop or choose screen resolution. If I right click on my recycle bin, notice it gives me a different set of options. If I go down here and I right click on Internet Explorer, it gives me a different set of options. If I highlight over the Internet Explorer tab and right click, it gives me yet again a different set of options. There's a lot of flexibility in understanding the right click and actually taking advantage of the right click in an operating system because it makes sure it, it makes you understand better what options are available to you with certain types of files. Uh, and, and it's also a great learning tool because there's a lot of features and such in these systems that people just simply do not know about or simply do not become aware of because they do not use this right click uh, on the mouse and actually see what they could actually be what they could actually do with what they're looking at. Now there's a couple of things to understand here. Since it is an operating system and it is uh, supposed to simplify your life, you really want to find out what works best for you because there's more than one way to do things. You don't have to do things my way. I'm going to show you what I can do and, and what you're capable of doing. And of course, you can go in and decide for yourself if that's the best way for you to handle it or for the best way for you to do it yourself. You may find over time that a different method works for you. And since personal computers are personal, you may, that's part of the process. You know, technology, and I've talked about it regularly on my show, is an extension of yourself. Uh, and in many cases, what works for one person doesn't work for another. I just wanted to throw that out there. Um, now, one more thing before I close out this video that I want you guys to be aware of is there is a button on your keyboard. It's a Windows button, and it looks a little something like this. Probably, I don't know if you can see that or not because I can't see myself on the camera. But when you press the Windows button on Windows 8, it brings up your start menu or your tile window. Okay, if you press it again, it'll bring up your desktop. So you can toggle very quickly between your desktop and your tiles just by pressing that Windows button. I just keep pressing it over and over and over again. Now in the next video, we're actually going to discuss what kind of uh, shortcuts you can use with this Windows button as well, because there are a ton of shortcuts that can be utilized in the Windows 8 operating system with that home button. And especially with the advent of Windows 8 and the user interface being a little frustrating, I strongly encourage you guys to, to learn these Windows shortcuts and learn them well. They will save you tons and tons of headaches down the line. 
So those are the very basics of what a Windows operating system is. It's basically, to, to cover or in summary, is it's basically a software layer that exists so that your computer or your hardware is very easy for you to use. That's the whole point of an operating system. It allows you to simply add new hardware to your computer experience so that you don't have to deal with the frustrations of manually having to code all that yourself. And then once it's interfaced with it, it allows you to install software on it so that you can be productive. That's the whole point of the environment. It is structured like a filing cabinet, so you can go through and organize things in your own unique way. And it's good to keep that in mind when you're actually going forward with Windows 8. So those are the very fundamentals of a Windows 8 operating system. And as I said, tomorrow we're going to go into more detail on what you can do with the, with the operating system. And as we progress through this series, we're going to go from this very basic information to a lot of really awesome things you can do. So thank you guys for coming out as always. My name is Craig Chamberlain with CraigTheTechTeacher.com. If you have not yet become a patron, make sure you do so. Check it out in the link below, and I'll see you guys in the next Windows 8 video.